Praise God, praise God, praise God. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Everything I need, I find in the house of God. There's nothing that I can't find in the house of God. God is here to meet every need that you have. And he's a very positive, loving, forgiving, and gracious God. And we can all say amen. So good to be back in Peterborough after a uh, couple years away. I don't know if I was here in 19. No, maybe it was 18. But uh, maybe I was here in 19. But uh, yeah, it was 19 because... I just talked to this brother right here, and God gave him a job, right? Praise God. Yes, the Lord blessed him. Thank you, Lord. So God is good, and we're glad to be here tonight. I'm just feeling like God's going to do something really spectacular tonight. If you came tonight to experience some kind of a same old, same old, well, you better just head for the door now. Because that's not the what it's going to be. Hallelujah. But well, we do uh, thank you for allowing us to come and Pastor and Sister Crawford and the Crawford family. It's so great to see them again. Look in the very picture of health. <laughs> Must have found the fountain of youth. So uh, we're happy to be with them and all of you, uh, many of you that I do know and some of you I have never met yet, so that's great. That's a good thing. Praise God. Everybody happy tonight? All right. Just checking. Hallelujah. It's good to be with you. Sister Crawford, do something in the key of F, anything you want. You know that song, don't you? Anything you want. Hallelujah. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up for that meeting in the sky. If you think it's strange, don't wait for me to change. I'm just warming up for when I reach the other side. Hey, I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up for that meeting in the sky. Well, if you think I'm strange, don't wait for me to change. I'm just warming up for when I reach the other side. Of the church, they were quiet as quiet could be. Nobody was praising the Lord, nobody but me. They said I was kind of emotional. Mm -hmm. But when I go to church, I don't just go pick up space. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. For that meeting in the sky Well, if you think I'm strange Don't you wait for me to change I'm just warming up For that meeting in the sky When I reach those pearly gates And they swing open wide I'm gonna leap for joy Cause I made it to the other side All my pain and sorrow Then will I Forget. And if you think I sat down here, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, now I'm just warming up. 
Well, I'm just warming up well I'm warming up for that meeting in the sky If you think I'm strange Don't wait for me to change I'm just warming up when I reach the other Come on somebody I'm just warming up my praise I'm just warming up I'm just warming up For that meeting in the sky If you think I'm strange Don't say it I'm just warming up But when I reach the other side Oh yes Lord I give you praise Oh, yes, Lord, I give you praise. I praise you, Lord. Somebody lift your voice by faith and praise God as though you had everything you could want. Praise God like you'll praise him after you have your miracle. Go ahead and praise him now for it. Hallelujah. Let's just shout in advance. What do you say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Fill this house with your presence, oh God. Heal the sick tonight, Lord. Deliver the oppressed tonight. In the name of Jesus, fill the empty, O oh God. Touch those who are destitute financially and give them a blessing, O oh Lord. Every need, O oh Lord, you're able to supply. And I give you praise, God. You are great and you're greatly to be praised. And somebody said amen. amen. Praise God. Once again, it's great to be here in Peterborough with all of you. And it's my honor and privilege to be with you here tonight. Praise God. And your pastor is quite a, a man of God, and we're very happy to have him as our longtime friend, him and his good wife. And my goodness, they are just A1 in my book. Obviously, that would be the case. Or I wouldn't be here for so many years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Either that or some people are just sucker for punishment. I don't know which. Hallelujah. But I'm glad to be with you here tonight. And, and what a time that God is ready to give to this church. You are here tonight not by coincidental circumstance. You are here by sovereign decree. God, long time before you and I were born, knew that we would be together on March the 24th in the city of Peterborough, and he already has a miracle set aside for you. So if you snooze, you lose. So stay with it tonight. We'll be short, unless I think you're not listening, and then I will preach for a couple of hours. Hallelujah. Now no one will take their eyes off of me for the rest of the evening. So that's great. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. What a privilege it is to see all the precious saints of God and uh, folks that I've made friends of over, over the years. So glad to see you here tonight. Tyson, you've lost some weight since I saw you, saw you last. Man. I'm the only one that gained five pounds. Come on, give me a break. All right, here we go. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come, from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And I will preach to you tonight what I believe that God has given to me for this group of people on this particular night. This 
is your day of restoration. This is your day of restoration. Look at somebody and be very rude, point your finger at them and say, this is your day of restoration. Go ahead, do it. And then repeat after me, this is my day of restoration. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we change gears now. We move into the spiritual realm where angels are walking and the Holy Ghost is flowing. Miracles are being given. Gifts are being given. Anxiety and pressures of life must go. And all the demons of guilt, I command you in the name of Jesus, flee. And let the presence of the Lord fill this house. Oh God, let there be signs and wonders in thy holy name. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord, shall we? I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm going to say tonight. For somewhere during this message, God is going to speak to an individual. And I want you to be listening carefully. So with that in mind, you may be seated. I'm thankful tonight that God did not give me a word of judgment for you tonight. But God gave me a very encouraging and uplifting word for you that are here under the sound of my voice. To those who may have failed, to anyone who has strayed at one time or another, for those who feel like you've missed the perfect will of God, and to that individual who wonders, will God forgive? Tonight, I come with a word from the Lord. This is your day of restoration. Let's take some quotes from our scripture tonight. He said in Acts 3.19, your sins may be blotted out. God says he will not only forgive, which is wonderful, but in addition, he will blot out your sins. This is more than forgiveness. To blot out means that whatever you did has been expunged. It has been obliterated. Matter of fact, the phrase blotted out comes from the practice of in ancient times, of writing on tables covered with wax. And then by inverting the stylus, smoothing the wax again, every trace of the record was removed. When it says, shall be blotted out, it's referring to the custom of taking that writing instrument when they were writing into the wax and smoothing over the line so that there is no visible words left. Today, the generous offer from the word of God, if you will receive it, is powerfully clear. Your sins may be blotted out, expunged, and completely erased. Here's another quote from God's word. Quote, times of refreshing shall come 
from the presence of the Lord. Times of fresh mental and physical strength shall come from the presence of the Lord. You are not in this alone. This is not just some kind of a spiritual Kiwanis club, if you have those up here. This is not just some rotary meeting or some, some club that you belong to. You are in the very house of the God of Israel who is alive and the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God is going to bring to you tonight a time of fresh mental and physical strength. Some of you have been dealing with brain fog. And it seems like, to some extent, that comes with age. But there is a God who is able to renew your strength and cause you to mount up with wings of an eagle. He is ready tonight to take you from where you are and to bring you to a place in him where signs and wonders take place and the miraculous happens on a regular basis. He's ready to take you into a place with him where Moses said, God said to Moses, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and, and I will cause my presence to, to pass by you. Is there anybody here today that's tired of being tired? Is there anybody here tonight that desires God to hook the jumper cables to you and recharge your battery? Is there anybody here tonight that has a loved one that you want saved, but you don't know how to make it happen? Well, tonight, this is your day of restoration. If there's anyone who will receive this, this is your day of restoration. This is not a sermon. It's a word from God. He's telling you, this is your day of restoration. Somebody say, praise God. I don't think anybody wants to fail. But everyone has at some time or another. So the word of God prophesies times of refreshing, both mentally and spiritually and physically, shall come. This refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So get it over with. You repent. You ask God to forgive you. You express your sincere regret for failing and you have remorse. And then the Bible says, repent and be converted. Converted in the original language meant to return to the path from which one has gone astray. Repent and return to the right path. It seems like that guys are more prone to do this than ladies, but we'll get on the wrong road and we'll say, well, I think I can cut over. I think I can take this side road that will bring me back to the main road. And the wife is saying, why don't you just turn around and go back to where you got off the road and get back on it? Can I hear an amen? Amen. I'm not trying to start any kind of marital strife here tonight. But I see people all the time who have made a wrong turn somewhere and instead of going back to where they made the wrong turn and getting back on the entrance ramp, they seem to try to make themselves believe they can just keep going further and further and further and somehow it's going to work out okay. I do know this. If you get on the 407, is that the one that comes right up to Peterborough? And you get on 407 North, 115 North. 
You will not be arriving in Toronto anytime soon. When you get on the wrong road or you get in the wrong direction, one time my family and I were traveling and you've heard some of my stories. I've been preaching here for 29 years. But we had breakfast at a truck stop on Route 80 in Pennsylvania. Route 80 is one of the longest roads in the world. Very boring and monotonous. And it takes hours to traverse. So we stopped at a truck stop, had breakfast. We were talking, laughing, kidding, joking around. I got on the highway, started driving. I drove till, oh, I don't know, probably a couple hours. And I happened to notice that I was on Route 80 East. And I said, we've turned the wrong way. I got off the exit, got back on Route 80 West, and we had lunch at the same place we had breakfast. We liked it that well. When the Bible says repent and be converted, it means to return to the path from which you have gone astray. And then God says, I promise the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I am here to tell the Pentecostals of Peterborough that you are witnessing now and about to witness in a way perhaps you never dreamed. People being restored that you never thought were restorable. People coming back to God that the community has written off. And quite honestly, folks in the church have written off too. They said, no, oh, those people will never be back. Why, it'll be a cold day in hell before those people come back. You are absolutely wrong. God is speaking to prodigals right now. As we stand in this pulpit, God is talking to somebody that's sitting in a bar. God is talking to somebody that's at a place they shouldn't be. God is talking to somebody who's in a struggle with sickness and disease. God is talking to somebody right now whose marriage has hit the rocks and they're wondering, God, is there any hope for me whatsoever? And I come in the name of Jesus to tell you that this is the day of restoration. People that you thought could never be used of God will be used of God in a mighty way. People who you thought could never overcome the problem that they had will overcome and will be a tremendous testimony to this community. I'm preaching to somebody in this building tonight that the devil has said, you can never be what you once could have been, but he is lying to you. This is your day of restoration. You see, you need to understand that restoration is the very heartbeat of God. The overreaching purpose of God down through time has been to restore to man what Adam lost in the garden. It's been his heartbeat from day one that people would be restored. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 21, it states the ultimate purpose of God. It says that the restitution or the restoration of all things. That is the overreaching purpose of God. The restoration of all things. It's time for the church to begin to believe God and begin to say, restore, restore, restore. Restore, restore. Anybody want your faith restored? Say it, restore. Anybody here needs your health restored? Say it, restore. Anybody here have loved ones that you want to be saved? Say, restore. Don't just walk around with your head down, your hands shoved into your pockets as though you have no God in this world. I'm here to tell you that the God of heaven has sent me to tell you tonight that this is your day, Pentecostal of Peterborough. This is your day of restoration. 
If there's anybody that would receive that, would you just stand to your feet very quickly, throw your hands in the air, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Thank you. May be seated. According to the Apostle Peter, in his message on the day of Pentecost, he said, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. He said in Acts 2.30, Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to, to sit on his throne. I know that you know this, or at least some of you know it. Psalm 51 was written by David. It's one of the most beautiful passages in the entire Bible. It was written by David. And I want you to remember that it was penned by David after the prophet Nathan had confronted him with his horrible sin. Were it not for David's restoration, we would be missing one of the most beautiful and meaningful passages in the entire Bible. But even more important than that, we would be missing the most beautiful and wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ's lineage, according to the flesh, came from a restored and forgiven David. Do you understand that some of David's greatest works came after he was forgiven and restored? I wonder what the Lord has in mind for you. I wonder why the devil wants to bother you with guilt and condemnation on a fairly continuous basis. I come in the name of Jesus. I wonder how many souls will be saved if you will get up again. I wonder how many souls will be saved if you'll get your mind off of yourself and get your mind back on the mission. For after all, isn't that what the devil is doing this for? He wants to keep you preoccupied with thoughts about your own weaknesses and failures. But I will remind you that Psalm 51 was written by the hand of David after he had been a bad boy and done some pretty bad things, adultery and murder. And yet when God forgave him, God forgave him completely. He wrote Psalm 51 and there's several other Psalms that he wrote after he was forgiven and restored. And many times over the centuries, people have read those Psalms and tears have run down their face and they have been healed and they have been delivered because a forgiven and restored David was used of God to write scripture. The Bible says not only was he a king, but he was a prophet and he returned to the office of prophet after he was forgiven. He was restored because when God does something he doesn't do it part way he doesn't do it halfway he doesn't say well I forgive you but he doesn't say I forgive you but he doesn't say that at all he just says repent and be converted and your sins shall be blotted out as if they had never happened I wonder what Jesus has in mind for the person that God gave me this message for tonight. I wonder how many souls will be saved because you're fixing to get up and get with it. Your past is the past. Nothing will change it. You can't go back. For your own sake, learn from it, and then, as importantly, let it go. Let it go. When a flashlight grows dim, you don't throw it away. You change the batteries. 
You're worth more than a flashlight. God's not ready to throw you away by any means. He's not tossing you on the trash heap. He just says, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In other words, I will charge your battery. You know what needs to happen? We just need to get under the spout where the glory comes out. We need to get a good old-fashioned Duncan in the Holy Ghost. We need to talk in tongues until we can't even talk English anymore. Somebody needs to get the Holy Ghost so, so full in your, in your body that somebody has to help you out tonight and drive you home because you are legally intoxicated on the Holy Ghost. Trying to get through this generation with a little thimble full of Holy Ghost is about as stupid as it gets. There's too many people living in sorrow, sadness, and shame, even though Christ has forgiven. What's the answer? I think it's what the old timers used to tell me when I was a kid. They'd say, son, pray through. Make you so mad. Pray through. I thought she was going to tell me something meaningful. I thought she was going to tell me how to get over this. He said, I'll tell you how to get over it. Pray through. Well, I, I just did pray. I, I was talking to God. I even talked in a few tongues. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about swimming a little deeper. I'm talking about praying until the Holy Ghost so fills you that you forget where you are. How long has it been since we all just said, fooey on my schedule. I'm going to stay here until God touches me. I'm not leaving here until God fills me. I'm not going out of this building until God makes me feel the joy of the Lord one more time in my life. Isn't it something that God raises up David from the ashes of defeat and places him in the ancestry of Christ? Isn't it something that God turns a fearful man by the name of Gideon into a mighty man of valor? Isn't it something that God specializes in giving people fresh batteries? You see, your failure is only fatal if you will not get up. Jesus walks up to the man and he says, wilt thou be made whole? There's sometimes when you just got to suck it up, buttercup. There's sometimes when you just have to stand up and say, okay, that's it. I'm not listening to that voice. That's not the voice of God. Hey, if you've lived for God any time at all, you ought to know by now that when the presence of God speaks, it brings peace. When the devil says, this is the Lord, and I am telling you that I'm very unhappy with you, it brings great discomfort, and it brings guilt and shame, and that is nothing but the devil or a demon masquerading as God, because when the Lord comes, he says, I love you. I care for you. I see your tears. Tears are a language I understand. I, I, I'll take those tears and, and I'll put them in a bottle. I, I understand you. I love you. I created you. I knew all things before you were ever born. And I also knew how I was going to deliver you and set you free. And tonight, you need to stand to your feet, so to speak, and say, today is my day of restoration. I'm not going to live like that anymore. I'm going to be a restored person. You see, that stumbling stone actually becomes a stepping stone. I am watching with amazement right now in our area. People that the world and honestly the church has said, there's no hope for that person. And I'm watching them come back from impossible distances. And they're walking up and they're becoming prayer warriors, and they're becoming leaders, and, and they're, they're having ministries, and, and it is a testimony of the power of the mercy and the grace of God. Every time my son Eric gets up and sings on the praise team, 
I'm thinking, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Whew. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. So God turns our mistakes into valuable lessons that not only helps us, but helps others. It is amazing. I want to say this to you, and I'm getting ready to close. When the prodigal finally came to himself, and this is one prayer we need to be praying, God, cause all the prodigals to come to themselves. And when he did, he arose, he came to his father, but when he was a great, yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight. I'm not worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. Bring here the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry, for my son was dead and he's alive. He was lost and he's found. And they begin to be merry. There's just a few things I want to point out to you. The father saw this wayward son coming a long time before anybody else did. The Bible said while he was still yet a great way off, father was looking for him. You're thinking you have to convince God. And what you don't realize is it's God that convinced you to come back to church. He saw you a long time ago. And the father said, bring forth the best robe. He didn't say, all right, now, you go over there and sit in the cheap seats. I love you, but you'll never be what you could have been. When the prodigal came home from doing all kinds of stuff that he wished he hadn't done, Father said, bring the best robe, put it on him. See, God's way of thinking is different than the way you think. The father said, put the best robe. And look at this. He said to the servants, he said, you, I command you to put the best robe on him. It was given the servants' responsibility. The church folk, if you want to get real clear, were commanded, you put that robe on. I bought it. I purchased it. I want you to put it on him. You put the robe on him. Don't stand there and say, well, <laughs> you finally came back, huh? About time, you rascal. Father said to the servants, you put the best robe on him. And then father put the covenant ring upon his restored son. That ring represented the covenant. He said, I'm putting you back in the covenant. Don't you tell me that I can't be what Father wants me to be. He put the covenant ring upon my hand. He's given me the best robe to wear. My sins were like scarlet, but now he has made them white as snow. And all glory and honor be unto him, for he is the one who has cleansed me from every wrong, from every sin. I don't sing about myself. I sing he is worthy to receive glory and honor. He is worthy to receive power. That's the song of the redeemed. And the angels stand back with hush. And they listen as we who have been forgiven stand and say he is worthy. And he has redeemed us by his blood out of every tribe and nation. We stand today to say the power is still in the blood and today I say this is the day of your restoration I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God 
my people shall never be ashamed. You shall know I am in the midst, that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the pommel worm. And it shall come to pass afterward. After what? After I restore to you the years. Afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Is there anyone who will receive this? God is ready to restore to you literally years. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there's a precious soul here tonight. The devil has been trying to mess with your thinking. He's been arguing and accusing. And he's been trying to keep your mind on the past. But today the Holy Ghost says, I command you, shut the door on the past. You are ready now to enter into a time of restoration. For the Lord thy God will use you in ways you've never been used before. And he says, I will restore to you the years that you have lost. For when I, the Lord thy God, forgive, I forgive. I am commanding the best robe to be placed on you. I am commanding the covenant promises to be placed upon your hand. I am commanding your peace. I am commanding your joy. I will accept nothing less than that, saith the Lord. Is there anybody in the house right now that would like to rise to your feet and say, Lord, be it according to thy word. Unto me, be it unto me according to thy word. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive your blessing. I receive the promise of restoration of years. I am now realizing that even the son that I thought would never come back, that now you are going to bring him back. I was wondering if you would ever bring that daughter back, but now I know that indeed you will bring that daughter back. This is not something that humans can do, but it's something that the Lord can do, and I say he will do, for it is time in Peterborough for the restoration. It's already started, but my God, in the name of Jesus, we're going to go to another level tonight. It's Thursday night. We could have just had a little tiny sermonette and, and the beautiful singing that we've had, and we could walk out of here and say, oh, man, we're going to come back tomorrow night. But no, tonight, this is the night. This is the day that God says, this is the day of your restoration. I don't know what mistakes you've made. I don't know how long it's been since you spoke in tongues. I don't know how long it's been since you felt the presence of God. But I don't care if you haven't spoken in tongues for 40 years. Today is the day of your restoration. If you will believe God, there is nothing impossible to them that believe. Is there anybody here tonight? Close your eyes with me. Is there anybody here tonight that would like to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Today, today, this day, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with that wonderful Holy Spirit. Somebody said, well, I did speak in tongues a few years ago, five years ago. 
Some of you, it's been a while. And God is saying, I love you, and I will restore you now, not because you deserve it, but because my blood was shed for you, and I will give you that which you do not deserve. It's called amazing grace. So I'm going to ask you, I don't want anybody moving around just yet, but I'm going to ask you right where you're standing if you have either never received the Holy Ghost or it's been more than a day since you spoke in tongues. Brother Stoops, well, you, you just need to understand something. I, I've studied the scripture. The coming of the Lord probably will happen tonight. You're way too laid back. You don't understand the time that you live in. If I was to open the scripture to you and show you where the Iranians do indeed have nuclear armaments, I can prove it in the Bible. If I was to read to you what is coming, that a destruction that is going to be so horrific that it could be nothing less than nuclear I don't think I'd have to convince you that it's time to pray. I will tell you that you need to be living now in a state of readiness, and it's okay because God is going to help you to do that. But the day of living carelessly is over. Now we need to live for God with all of our heart. And by the way, when I say carelessly, he's going to take your cares away, but you're going to live for God, I should say, with intention with purpose, every step with purpose in the name of Jesus. So if you're here and you have have not spoken tongues for a while or maybe never have, it's okay. It will happen right now, just like that. And all you have to do is trust the Lord. You've already asked him to forgive you at least 100 times, the person I'm talking to. You've already asked God to forgive you many times, and he already has. So now you just need to have faith in God. I command that spirit of doldrums to fall off of you right now. Some of you are just just so tired, and it's not your fault. It's just there's spiritual warfare going on, and you're just feeling weary a lot. But that's going to drop away from you right now. I command in the name of Jesus Let the freshness of the presence of God come into your life right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Okay, now listen. Lift your voice. You don't have to look around. Nobody's going to come pray with you right now. You're just praying all by yourself. And a a, a lot of other people are going to be praying by themselves. And in just a moment, there will be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? And it's not upon the people who deserve it. If you deserve it, you are disqualified. But for people who do not deserve it, who are depending on the blood of Jesus, it is to you that I speak. And now every eye is closed. If you want to put your hands up in the air, that's a good thing. If you can't do that, that's all right too. And I'm going to pray for you. And as soon as I get done praying, I want you to begin to praise God with reckless abandonment. Just begin to praise him with reckless abandonment. Now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who brought me to this city this night, who has said that he is bringing you this day of restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demonic spirit of anxiety and fear and, yea, weariness and heaviness of heart. I command it to go in the name of Jesus Christ, and there he goes right now, out of this room, devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must go. I take authority over you. In the name of Jesus, you have to go. Now, now, lift your hands and begin to praise God and receive ye the Holy Ghost from the eldest to the youngest. Come on, let's just begin to praise God. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. The door is open to heaven right now. The windows of heaven are open 
just lift up your voice and begin to praise the Lord. I see the blood of Jesus coming down. I see the blood of Jesus covering you. I see the blood of Jesus covering your past. I see the blood of Jesus healing your body. I see the blood of Jesus, the all powerful, omnipotent blood of Jesus. Now receive ye the Holy Ghost. I command it in the name of Jesus. No one's coming back to you, but you can open your mouth and begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance all around this building. This may be your first time, second time, or third time to be in this building or you might have been here for the last umpteen years. It doesn't matter. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth open your mouth. Let that tongue begin to speak in the language that God knows and that you do not know and the Holy Ghost begins to make intercession for you according to the will of God. Hallelujah. 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 He's bigger than your situation. He's bigger than your husband. He's bigger than your wife. He's bigger than that lost son. He's bigger than your fears. He's bigger than your past. He is the awesome God. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, let visions happen now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let there be signs and wonders that this people may know that you are speaking to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, confirm your word now with signs following. Hata Ramosata Ramoho Sata Rimatata Labokura Bahata Romo Santa Lalabahata That's it. Begin to swing your hand if you need to. Break out. Break out of your lethargy. That's it. Break out. Break out. Be aggressive in your praise. Break out. Break out into praise. Break out into worship. Oh, hallelujah. Let Jesus know how much he means to you. Break out your praise. Break out your praise. Hata Ramosata Ramando no more in the name of Jesus Christ, Rama, that's it, that's it. Now if you want to, step out in the aisle and begin to move your feet a little bit and begin to say, I believe God. I dance the dance of victory. I wave my hands in victory. I shout in the Holy Ghost. I say that the God of heaven is with us and he will not fail us. Rimona. Santa Ramondo, I believe God. I believe God. That's it. Begin to move your feet a little bit. Uh, begin to exercise your faith. Uh, begin to say, now I'm going to be blessed like I've never been blessed. Come on. You become the prophet right now. You begin to prophesy what God is going to do in your life. You begin to say, I will be blessed. Come on, say it. I will be blessed like I've never been blessed. The gifts of the Spirit are going to operate in my life. The Spirit of God is upon me. His presence is filling me. Hallelujah. Prophesy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You get to say what's going to happen. God has placed you in charge right now. Hallelujah. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and speak in tongues. Pray in the language that the devil can't understand. Machine gun the devil right now with your spirit of God speaking through you in other tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been going through it, get out of that chair. Get out of that row. Walk down the aisle. You got to become a little bit more militant in the name of Jesus. I'm exercising my faith. I'm believing God. I'm not going to sit here and waste away. I'm believing God. Listen, honey, God's got a future for you. God's got a future for you. There's a lady God just showed me. God's got a future for you. He's not forgotten you. He's got a future for you. You need to praise God with wild and reckless abandonment. When the saints begin to praise God, marvelous things begin to happen.
come on, somebody in this building, not too long ago, the devil was saying, you're stuck. You can't get anywhere. You're stuck in a rut. You're never going to get past this point. You've been in this situation a long time and the devil wants you to believe that you're never going to get out of that I got news for you this is the day of your restoration begin to exercise your faith claim it speak it say I'm getting better God's working in me God's saving my family God's healing my body God's touching my job God's helping me. God's got a work for me to do. I trust him. I believe him. I know that he knows all about it. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Something is going on right now. There's something going on right now. In the name of Jesus, be full of the Holy Ghost and faith. Yes, that's it. I believe God. I believe God. Tell him, I believe you, Jesus. I'm not doubting you, Jesus. I'm believing you, God. You're able. There's nothing too hard for you. Hallelujah. That's it. Let the Lord bless you right now. Speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. I trust God. God, I'm not stuck in this rut anymore. I know that you're working. That's it. I believe you, Jesus. I believe you're going to work. I believe, oh God. I believe. I stand upon the word of God. I stand upon the word of God. I stand upon the promises. I stand upon the promises. Come on, there's a surge of Holy Ghost. Go ahead and tap into that. Tap into that. There's a surge of the Holy Ghost. Tap into that. Ha! Riba Satala Bokoto in the name of Jesus. God has a work for you to do. Ramaha Satalaba in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you're doing a work in us. Remando Ribo Santa. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I believe God. It's going to be all right. God's got his hand on you. Yes, come on, give God the praise. I believe in Jesus. That's it. There's victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Praise God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, use your Lord for your glory. Let there be a powerful surge of Holy Ghost power. I believe in Jesus. God, you're great, and you're greatly to be praised. I believe you, Jesus. I trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. God's recharging the battery. In the name of Jesus, God, you're recharging the battery. God, this man, Lord God, Lord, he wants to win souls. There's been a desire in his heart to be fruitful. And now I command in the name of Jesus, cause him to be fruitful in the kingdom of God. Give him boldness, Lord. Fresh boldness and anointing to speak. I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe that God is able. There's nothing that he cannot do. Now in the name of Jesus, I turn myself over to you, Lord, with reckless abandonment. I abandon myself. I abandon my dignity and my pride. And I reach to the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Hallelujah. 